A day after news breaking that the top two marketing executives at Anheuser-Busch, Alyssa Heinerschneid and Daniel Blake, got given the old heave-ho, Anheuser-Busch is out there on the stump trying to make the situation a little bit better. And you know things are going awful if the CEO of the U.S. division has to go out to the CBS morning show in order to pave some things over. But why did they pick him specifically? Well, basically, they're playing on the same team, right? Like, we knew about his background, okay? He used to work for the CIA. Like, none of this is coincidental, guys. Like, if you've been around long enough, you knew exactly what time it was. But we got three different clips here, and it's very revealing. Now, I'm not going to tell you that this is a hardball interview by any means or methods. And does he clear up anything? Oh, of course not. He works for Anheuser-Busch. What do you expect? We've seen a pattern develop over these past three months. So it's only just going to continue to uh, dig the grave of the once beloved company. And, well, to be completely honest, we're kind of here for it at this point. We should point out that you're a former United States Marine and you were also at the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA. Correct. So you know a little bit about... Yeah, so you know a little bit about subversion. You know, you tried to sneak one underneath everybody's noses, but you ended up getting caught. Okay, so how would you like to dig your way out of this one? All right. Stress. Uh, yeah. Just a tiny bit. Just a little yeah. bit. Uh, how did you go from the CIA to Anheuser-Busch? <laughs> Well, it's actually pretty simple. You know, you have these multinational corporations and they want people who have tendrils and a bunch of different international affairs. Oh, no, you want, you know, the nice sanitized line. You don't want, oh, okay, you don't want all the secrets. Ah, oh, we got we got it. You know, I, I thought the, the highest calling that anybody can have is serving the country. Uh, but for, you know, personal reasons, made the decision after eight years in service of the country to, to move into, into business. I worked for PepsiCo. For a number of years and i came here 10 years ago and i've been in this position for two years yeah so instead of making people fat now you can just make them drunk you know, hey man he's definitely a peddler of good stuff and let alone what he was doing when he was with the cia but i'm sure we're never gonna figure that part out you still and like this job i love this job so? and i love the company uh -huh. and it really is as i mentioned an american institution and it's really to me one degree of separation away from the united states the, the american flag and so even Yo, there's just dead and lifelessness in his eyes, other than after him saying, look, we'll just run that back real quick, okay, because you can see the eye flutter there. Just a little bit of amateur body language analysis, but after he said, it's basically as, you know, it's as American as the American flag, right? Even though he was just professing, saying that serving his country is the highest calling that he could answer, and then basically equating a beer brand to America, even he knew that was a little bit fucked up, so just flag. watch. And so even though I'm not serving the country anymore, I still feel like I have an opportunity uh, to support the, the country. And that's exactly what Anheuser-Busch gives us the opportunity to do. And you're a lot of staccato delivery there, a lot of, you know, closing his eyes a bit. Like I said, amateur body analysis or body language analyses on that one. But you, you already know what time it is. Come on. You're feeling you'll get through this. Absolutely. We should point out that oh yeah we're gonna get through this 100 percent company is basically as american as apple pie right as american as beating your wife over a cold casserole brendan whitworth has asked hat or asked how he's handling the massive drop in sales and people shooting bud light cans with guns oh my god see this is this is the big controversy you know you know what wasn't mentioned in the beginning yeah so what kind of kicked all this stuff off oh no we don't want to address that part because of course this is cbs after all they're gonna toe the politically correct line and of course uh, or our edgy young hip ceo with his white shoes and his blazer with his you know jeans on what a yuppie attire gross and i think the fact remains that millions and millions of consumers enjoy bud light each and every day and enjoy well that's a strong term but okay they do still it. mad though brendan because the sales have dropped how are you handling that precipitously what oh, what presaged that there gail do you want to get into that no okay i mean no. the ceo i, I just I, I i want to know what this was been like for you what caused this why don't you ask that question you're supposed to be a good interview haven't seen that when you've had so much vitriol on all sides your sales are dropping people you know you, we have people firing guns at bud light cans i mean it's just oh my god and then you also have activist groups calling in bomb threats to breweries and which side is that oh right don't want to talk about that huh it's gotten really uh, yeah. off the chain crazy yeah so oh my god like that that known radical kid rock all right how have you 
How are you grappling with that, handling that? I think it's the impact, honestly, on the employees that weighs most on Oh my me. God. See, if you just don't support, if you don't support the big company, you know, the peons, the people that we assign numbers to instead of getting to know them, they're going to be the most affected because if you just don't shut up and if you just don't open up your wallet for us, we're going to have to fire them. Trying to hold the you know, public hostage, it's not working because we've seen you guys take sales hits over and over and over again, week after week. Now we're getting to a point where the drops keep growing and you keep giving away free beer. Oh well, best of luck. But again, as I mentioned, seeing the pride and the commitment that they have working on behalf of a 165 plus year old American institution is what gives us energy. Too big to fail, right? Oh, we've just been around for so long. Yeah, you know why you were around for so long? Because you were just a brand that provided alcohol. Weren't trying to make any political statements, which it's kind of funny. Still aren't coming back to that. You know, the only thing that people want and the only thing that people might actually resonate with is you just going, yeah, tried something new and it's really fucking bit us in the ass. Uh, yeah, not going to be doing that again. We're just going to come back and we're going to do our great, we're going to do our brand new comeback plan. How much did they have to pay for this spot? Like, seriously, okay? You have the CEO of a company that is absolutely on fire right now. Not in a good sense. In the fact that, yeah, uh, we can't figure out how we're going to stop the bleeding right now. We continue to get ratio day after day, week after week on everything that we do. Everywhere. Now you're going to go to mass media. You're going to tell a you know, partial slice of this story. You know, not mention dylan by name or the tranny that shall not be named i guess is that where we're going with and just make vague allusions to the the right-wing radicals that are out there just shooting bud light cans don't make mention of the uh, what was it five or six gay bars across the country that have you know uh, publicly removed your products okay uh the left-wing activist campaigns like the human rights campaign going out there and taking away your gay certification or whatever the fuck they call it removing your diversity inclusion and equity score from a perfect 100 all the way down to zero because you didn't stand dylan hard enough and maybe this will once again go against your or go against your score because you just aren't bringing up your trans spokesperson we knew at least of one other one that had the bud light partnership but i don't know if that necessarily fits into the new comeback plan energy as as we as we look to move forward and focus on what we do best yeah, those employees so and i think the fact what does that piss off your remaining customer base like good luck pal good luck so to answer the question how he's handling the massive drop in sales we're a good company and we've been around for a while we're just like standard oil or american iron we're not going anywhere whoops but last and probably most revealing it's the longest clip as well and has bush ceo brendan whitworth seems like he has no regrets about the decision that destroyed bud light and suggesting that he would do it again yes we made a mistake yes we're knocking off about 30 percent of our sales in year over year trials but would i do it again hell yeah i'd do it again good temperament to have you know you want somebody at the helm of your company you know willing to just go out there and weather the storm but when it's just detrimental to your company um i <laughs> Not exactly a winning proposition here there, uh, Brendan. Let's go, Brendan, indeed, right to the employment office. America with trans issues at the top of a Republican social uh, or conservative uh, political agenda. Holy fuck, did that guy just let the uh, agenda slip there for a second? I don't know who this pencil pusher is, but yeah. Oh, you got those trans issues right at the top of the Republican conservative right I don't know Why won't they just let us groom kids already, God damn it! And we're just trying to get, I don't know, one of these uh, real plugged in Gen Z Zoomer type uh, activists out there just trying to push alcohol onto kids. It's not, you know, terrible enough that, you know, you want to have somebody out there who's so proud and so happy about their chemical castration and the requirement of facial surgery. Now, you know, you just got to push a vice, uh, another form of chemical dependency on them. Good stuff. Knowing what you know now, if you could go back, would you send this can to this one person again? There's this one can to this one person. Literally, Dylan is fuck. If you're looking to file any more paperwork, maybe you should just go out there and get a name change and, and just go right to fucking you know Dylan Voldemort. It's just this one can to this one person. Uh, a big social conversation taking place right now, and big brands are right in the middle of it. And it's not just our industry or Bud Light. It's happening in retail. It's happening. In 
Yeah, Target, and that's going exceedingly well for them. But remember this asshole, right before the launch of that terrible Good Times ad, you know, where they just openly hate men and nobody wants to point that out. But that's all right. You can just continue to go back and say, you're erasing women. <laughs> remember when he said, oh, we're just going to stop being political. We'll go back and we'll review his actual statements from when he said this beforehand, because that's the same fucker who made those statements. He's now going out there saying, oh, we're just making the social issues, the social commentary. You haven't, like it said, like the caption said, hasn't learned a fucking thing in fast food and so for us what we need to understand is deeply understand and appreciate is the consumer and which you don't which clearly you don't because all of this all of this could have been mitigated the 27 billion dollars that were knocked off your market valuation yeah that could have been mitigated by a lot by just going oopsie daisy we kind of fucked up over here okay uh yeah not not, not gonna be doing that one again but no you just continue to waddle out these terrible non-apologies just saying hey we're trying everything over here okay we're just you're gonna try to go back to the same old 2010s marketing plans okay we're just not you know so forward with our progressive agenda we'll just you know go back we'll take one step back and oh what right, come on we're trying over here just unbelievable just haven't learned a thing and what they want, what, what they care about, and what they expect from, from big brands. Oh my god. What do you expect from big brands? It's just presupposing that everybody just goes out and has an intrinsic level of trust of giant corporations. I don't know. Can't speak for the left because I am not that sort, but somebody who has a healthy level of skepticism when it comes to anything of a certain size companies government women i just intrinsically don't trust anybody and i don't think that you know they have my best interest in mind this is a part of why you're getting it from all sides because i asked you would you do it again and people on the on the trans rights side of things supporting that community want you to say yes of course we want that fortitude and it's never going to work because you see what happens when you bend the knee to them once it's never enough for them then you just end up becoming a vessel for their message them co-opting your platform until it just ends up being a burnt disgusting unrecognizable corpse take a look at every media property that ended up getting co-opted look at the in at some entertainment industries the comic book industry is a perfect example of that you let those fucking wackos through the door now what one of the top selling books ends up selling 30,000 copies when they used to do six, seven digits. Like, come on, man. You know what time it is. Uh, and, and, and people on the right would criticize you for saying yes. So uh, where are you on the issue? I mean, was this a mistake? Yeah. Um, and again, he says, oh, we got to know our consumer base. We just got to know. But you don't. Clearly, you didn't. Because of the beer drinking coalition, you don't really see a lot of those Bud Light cans, okay, mixed in with, you know, the Apple teeny crowd. So why are you trying to court them? Oh, we just need to have a younger, more vibrant group of people drinking our beer. But then run back the new commercial that's out there. Not a lot of exceptionally young people, just a lot of dumb guys and frumpy women. So, hey, you know, you know damn right who your consumer base is. They, you, they just hope. Budweiser, Anheuser-Busch, Bud Light. They just hope that they're as dumb as they think you are. You know, we, uh, Bud Light has supported LGBTQ since 1998, so. Perfect, now you just made it the central core marketing figure of your entire campaign. How well is that working out? Well, we already know. Well, that's 25 years. And as we've said from the beginning, we'll continue to support the communities and organizations that we've supported for decades. Mm -hmm. Yo, that's a hot, this, that sounds like a hostage message right there. We've supported them since 1998 and we will continue to do so even at the detriment of our business, but we'll continue to support them because we have to. Otherwise my ESG scores and all that and whatever, you know, those fucking idiots that just want to say that just think that everything's out of their own control. No, man, you're beholden to this shit. Yeah, guess what? The entire scheme behind that is, oh yeah, pushing all that stuff is so those companies can end up buying up more stock. It's basically predatory loans. It's a practice that's been around for generations. Now you just have hedge funds just doing it again. Here, you guys need a loan? Well, okay, we'll buy into your business. And that's all right. You can just go ahead and, you know, pay us back at any point in time. Or you can just go ahead and we'll shave a couple of points off. You can adopt some of these strategies and eh, maybe we'll have a little bit more lax of a plan. And then they just ratchet up their policies, ratchet up their standards a little bit higher. And that's how the cycle ends up going.
But then again, didn't really anticipate any sort of a based statement by somebody going on to CBS mornings where you're trying to placate to a bunch of single soccer moms. Like, come on, man. But as we move forward, um, you know, we want to focus on what we do best, which is brewing great beer for everyone, uh, listening to our consumers, being humble and listening to them. Being humble and listening to them. Well, at the same time, taking one stand by saying that, yeah, we're, we're here, we're queer, get used to it. And then not saying to the other side where we're not going to capitulate to them. We, we listen to our consumers. Uh, making sure that we do right by our employees, <laughs> take care uh, and support. Do right by our employees, but if nobody buys our beer, it's you bigots that end up, you know, cutting jobs. You're creating unemployment. You guys are the bad ones. Okay. Our partners and ultimately make an impact in the communities that we serve. So oh my God. What a fucking dork, man. Like, listen, bro. But going back to what he said a couple of weeks ago, Brandon Whitworth, the U.S. boss of Anheuser-Busch, said Bud Light's parent company will cut checks to reeling wholesalers and distributors to avoid apologizing for the Dylan Mulvaney fiasco. Uh, he offered financial olive branch to the Belgian-based beer giant that involves investing in projects that the people on the front line employs and launching a new ad campaign this summer to tout to the beer is easy to drink, easy to but enjoy. We are providing financial assistance to independent wholesalers to support their employees, freight fuels, our, uh, f uh, freight fuel surcharge will end oh through the end of 2023 yeah, as cases of Bud Light languish on store shelves. Well, Bud Light and also Budweiser as well. Third part involves launching a new, more palatable ad campaign that will reinforce what you've always loved about our brand, that it's easy to drink, easy to enjoy. The discussion surrounding our company and Bud Light has moved away from beer. Yeah, exactly. To just go out there and reinforcing your commitment to good advocacy from all of our pride members that we've been a proud uh, supporter of since... I don't know, when have we started supporting all that gay shit? No, 1998. Oh, we're definitely... We've been backing them for a long time. So why are you criticizing us now? Because, as you said before, the discussion shifted away from beer. And now what are you doing out there? I, I used to work for the CIA, and uh, I think that those right-wing lunatics that are out there shooting up cans of beer, that's not very good. Good stuff, Brendan. Once again, another day, another pathetic non-apology from Anheuser-Busch, and I'm sure that's going to do wonders for your sales. Can't wait for those Independence Day week sales figures. Hopefully all that free beer does something good for you guys. But with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.